oh, links don't matter, they're less important. It's like, no, they're not. They're more important than ever. SEO is dead for 15 years in a row every year and everyone freaks out like, yeah, it's the end of the world. Do you remember Google Plus? Google authorship, like those were things and they're gone, they're dead. Yeah. Google fails. Search engine optimization. Okay. It's it's not Google optimization. If one day, I don't know, everyone's just on TikTok, we'll adapt and we'll optimize for TikTok. Linkhouse, more than link building platform. Hello guys, my next guest, our next guest, is uh, Carl Kangu. So uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. I, I think you are the right person to talk about uh, a CEO Estonia conference. Uh, it's the second day uh, of the conference. So what are your thoughts about it? It's... Before the after party, of course, it's yeah. I'm uh, currently I'm a little sad because we are actually in the third day, at, you know, yeah, the, yeah, the, the VIP day and two, two main days. And it's been, it's been incredible. And I'm just like, I have to wait another year for the next one. It just, yeah. uh, but I think we went really good. The feedback from people has been amazing. Super happy with all the speakers, the sponsors, uh, the energy you guys bought, brought into the event was incredible. And yeah, I think it went really good. Yeah. So how do you feel about being, uh, you know, guest are you in your, in your, you know, your, in your country? Cause we all know that you are living in, in Asia. Uh, so I don't know how often. Um, are you visiting Estonia? But how do you feel here? Do you do you have some you know um, some some thoughts about about how how it changed or, or maybe some other thoughts about uh, how it looks like now? Yeah, so I left like ten years ago. I was eighteen, like, and I didn't when I left Estonia. I didn't have like the greatest impression of it. It was like when people said they would come to visit, I was like, why? But now after doing the conference last year, I really fell in love with it again. And it's changed so much. It's developed. The people are so nice. The yeah. food, everyone speaks perfect English. The food is great. The prices are great. And then hearing from all the attendees, they're like, this is amazing here. Yeah. It was like when we first started the conference, the kind of concern was that why would people come to Estonia? And now it's like, once people have been once, they're like, hell yeah, I'll come back. Yeah. And I, I, I feel the same way. Okay. So, uh, Carl, tell us more about yourself. Who is Carl Kang? Yeah, so I was born in Estonia, grew up in kind of a lower middle class family, parents had some troubles, and then got into online marketing when I was 12 just to try and help pay the bills. I couldn't get a job. Okay. And then uh, the, the moment I found SEO, it was like, hold on, whatever people Google, they accept as the truth, and I decided what's number one. I was like, that's a lot of power. I was like, this is really cool. And then from day one, you know, that, that kind of became my thing. Uh, but I was doing it throughout high school and like middle school even. And I couldn't relate to my friends back home. But meanwhile, I was meeting on forums, like awesome people doing this stuff all over the world. And that's kind of how I ended up in Asia because I had that community there. Uh, and then that's, you know, part of the reason now I do the SEO starting conference, like we should have that community here. We, we need to build that. Uh, and, and I think, you know, that the community aspect was such a part of, you know, my personal growth and financial growth is that, you know, that's why I see so much value in hosting these things. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your speech was about link building, the cutting the BS. Uh, so can you tell us a, a, something more about it? What, maybe what was the feedback um, after afterwards? Maybe uh, a little sneak peek of the of the you know the presentation. Yeah, so I, when I first started SEO in 2008, it was all about links. Yeah. It was only about links, and then we went through this middle phase of like I don't know if you've ever seen the Midwood meme. It's like you know. You have people with 60 IQ who are like content and links. Then you have the 100 IQ people who are like blah, 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 or like overcomplicating it. And the 140 IQ again is like just content and links. Yeah. And I feel like I went through that phase of like overcomplicating it. And now I've kind of come all the way back around. I was like, no, nah, actually, that's always been the foundation and the most important part. Uh, and then once I was able to like focus more on that again, then it's like, well, yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a part of the talk. Like, if you really boil SEO down to the basics of the algorithm and the history of Google, it's like it's always been that. But now there's been so many conversations that oh, links don't matter. They're less important. It's like no, they're not. They're more important than ever. Yeah. Like, if you look at any competitive industry, five years ago, you know, you wanted to buy a mattress online in the U.S., for example, you had these small companies competing. Now everyone's at the R90. Mm -hmm. Like, you're telling me links are not important. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, so that was like the first part of the talk. And then at, towards the end, 
going through some of the link building kind of myths and, and issues people don't talk about is that, you know, everyone's spending money on these guest host farms and niche edits, but like half of them don't even do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. But there's so many companies in, in our industry that they need the money, right? So like one of the experts are really talking about yeah. it is like the fact that they're not as effective as they used to be. Yeah. So do you think that SEO specialist uh, trying to, you know, overcomplicate it, uh, you know, whole process, the, then make it just simply, but because I, I think, uh, I think this is the tendency to, uh, to make it, make it complicated because I don't know, it's, is the reason that it will, it should work. But, uh, as Kyle says, uh, said also that, uh, the best way to do it is to make it on the, you know, the simplest way and that's it. I mean, to, to be an expert or guru or influencer, you have to do that, right? Yeah. You have to overcomplicate it because if you make 500 videos every single day saying it's content and links, it's like, why would I yeah. watch it anymore? So they need to keep pumping out just new content all the time. It's like, it's not that those things don't matter, but they don't matter to the average business owner okay. or our average client, for example. Sure, if you're Amazon competing with Walmart, every 0.1% matters, but like, the average startup, like, no, like do the content, do the links and, and you'll probably be good. Yeah. So it's 2024, it's June and we have uh, AI overviews, Google leak and recent uh, algorithm changes. What do you think about all this stuff? Because it's only six months this year and a lot of, a lot of things happen. I have strong opinions on this. And yeah. Like none of it matters. It's like, it's the same. Like I've heard SEOs that for 15 years in a row, every year and everyone freaks out, like. Featured snippets came out ages yep. ago. Like, yeah, it's the end of the world. And then six months later, we're like, wait, we can jump from number seven to number zero, like, like this by hacking the snippets. Like, we optimize for our search engines. That's what we do. And we can just optimize for AI as well. And I, I kind of predi predicted this last year already where SGE, everyone's panic came. Like, we don't even know if it's going to stick around. Do you remember Google Plus, Google authorship? Like, those were things and they're gone. They're dead. Yeah. Google fails. And it's like, we've already seen that where they rolled out AI in the US and the results were awful. And now you can already see, I think there's been data shared around SEO Twitter. It's like, they've already pulled back how much they show it. Yeah. And I think there's, it's going to keep happening more and more because they're going to have legal issues. You know, if, if they pull that from Reddit and say the cure to high blood pressure is cocaine, it's like, someone's going to tie and sue them. Google's not going to be able to, to yeah. keep doing that, right? Uh, and then the same goes for the Google algo leak. It's like, there's 14,000 things in that document. Yeah. And it's like, you can pick any one of those. You don't know how important they are, when they were important, if they're theories or they were actually live, yeah. like anyone can just pick something and, and come up with a story. So like the link builders will find something about link building and say, see, I was right. The semantic guys find something else. They're mm -hmm. like, see, that's important. It's like, we don't know. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. So. A, a jackpot, you know, it's like yeah. uh, finding the, finding the uh, most important factor. So what, in, in your point of view, what is the key uh, of the proper link building? With link building, I, I think quality matters more than ever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you, you need to get the hardest links uh, and then those are going to have the biggest impact. Okay. Uh, anything easy, uh, if everyone else is doing it, it just diminishes the value. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Google's going to catch on to those things. So it's like, you know, the worst of the worst links are the ones you can, that email you and yeah. like, here's our 200 sites. Do you want to buy a place for 15 bucks? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. what, what, what do you expect from that? Yeah, everyone is getting that and everyone is like ignoring this. If you can get a guest post on Shopify, it's a DR94 and it's like, they publish one article a week. Mm -hmm. Most of their internal content, like if you can get on yeah. there, like that's way more valuable. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but if you like our talk with Carl Kangur, you can't miss the webinar with him. Sign up using the link in the video description or pin comment and learn more about SEO from Carl. Okay, back to the podcast. Uh, so uh, what link building strategies do you recommend? What should we focus on in 2024? So. I think it really depends on the stage your business is at. So like if you're starting out doing something like Haro mm -hmm. or some, some similar platform, it's the easiest way. You don't need a lot of links. Mm -hmm. They're easy to do. They're basically free and it gives you the foundation to kind of start ranking. Then in the middle stages, you know, you can do high end guest posting, mm -hmm. like really high, high quality guest posts. And then once you get into the DR seventies and eighties, you know, I have a DR 77 digital marketing blog. I was spending 10 K a month on links. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm still a DR77. Like I can't compete with Neil Patel, you know, <laughs> just buying links. Yeah. So at that stage, I need to do linkable assets, link magnets, different tools, different uh, statistic pages, and like build something worth linking to. Or the other option is some kind of acquisitions. So if I find another digital marketing blog that's a DR60, merge that into my site, that's where you get those kind of big leaps. Okay, so let's talk about uh, domain rating for a while. So everyone knows that this is important uh, parameters. Do you think that this is this is the most important parameters in terms of third party uh, tools? And do you think that um, we need to be more focused about thinking about it since we know everyone knows that it could be manipulated? I mean, it, it's it's the classic SEO answer. It depends. Yeah. It's an easy way to look at things, but it's like, of course, other things matter too. But the only real time you have to worry about DR manipulation is you're dealing with sketchy sites. Yeah. If you're working with a crappy guest post form, of course they have the incentive to manipulate their DR. And in that case, you do want to check it. You check their backlink profile. Oops. Or the same thing can be said. People are like, oh, traffic is really important. Yeah, traffic is important if you're looking at a guest post farm because you want to see it's not been penalized. Yeah. But if you look at a real business, like if I get a guest post on a DR70 marketing site, like what are the chances a legitimate business manipulated their DR? Mm -hmm. Like zero. Doesn't that? Mm -hmm. Why would they do that? Yeah. The same thing with their traffic. It's like, you know, th there's a site I always use in, as an example that we use for guest posting. It's called user.com mm -hmm. and it's a DR70 something marketing company. They do like email marketing, SMS and whatever, uh, CRM, and they only get 700 visitors a month, but their backlink profile is incredible. Is that a bad link or a good link? And then if we put the same site into similar web, mm -hmm. they actually get 300,000 visitors a month. Yeah. They're a nine figure software company and like okay. doesn't get traffic because their competitors are MailChimp. They can't outrank them mm -hmm. and SEO is not a focus for them. So yeah. it's like, doesn't mean it's a bad link. The same thing goes with DR. Okay, so it it, it depends uh, as 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 always. So uh, tell me, from your point of view, how the perfect link building profile looks like. So this is something I covered in my talk. Is like, what what makes links valuable? Yeah. So there's like I, I look at it like four different things at least. So power mm -hmm. is is the obviously the most important part because. Otherwise, we can just start a brand new website and build links from there. So you need, you need power to for a link to matter. Then you have, let's say, the anchor text. Yeah. Definitely important. To what extent, though? Then you have the locality. You want to write in Poland, you need a Polish link. Estonia needs some Estonian links. Mm -hmm. And then you have the relevance. I have a golf website. I want to get some golf-related links. But now the, the biggest kind of misconception I see in the industry is that you need to get all four of these things from one link. Yeah. I need a Polish golf website linking to me with the yeah. keyword I want to rank for and it needs to be powerful. Like it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So the perfect link profile, like it depends what you're missing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a legitimate golf business, I probably already have some some Polish links. Yeah. I probably have some golf links. Mm -hmm. So like I always analyze what's the missing part. Yeah. If my DR is higher than my competitors or I have more links than them, mm -hmm. but then I'm not outranking them, okay, maybe I'm missing the locality. Maybe my anchor text is off, whatever. Yeah. But I'd say 85% of the time, the issue is the power. Mm -hmm. So you just want to get the most powerful links possible. So that's why, like, why is no one complaining about relevance when, when you get a link from Forbes? Mm -hmm. yeah. or, or when you do PR, digital PR, whatever. It's yeah. like, because the link just has to make sense. So, like, if a car website links to a baby website, it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. at all. If it get a link from Forbes, they talk about businesses. They can talk about it at a conference in Estonia. They can talk about a bakery in France. Yeah. They can talk about me as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The link makes sense, so it counts. Yeah, okay. So uh, will link building uh, still be important after Google implements AI overview globally? I don't think they're going to imp implement it globally or not to like the extent that most people believe. Mm -hmm. So we're still going to have normal results. Uh, I think they're still going to have to decide somehow what goes into the AI overview. And everything else is is manipulatable. Okay. Links are, have always been the hardest thing to manipulate. That's what made Google successful in the first place. So the strategies are probably going to change. We need to, you know, up our link building game and, and build better links. Uh, but I, I think they're only going to keep becoming more important. So from your point of view, what is worth focusing uh, in SEO nowadays? The it depends. Yeah. <laughs> the the classic it depends. Yeah. It's like. It's it's if you look at your ability to rank, it's you know three four different things. Mm -hmm. It's your on page SEO, 
plus your content, yeah. the number of pages you have, maybe tough call authority to an extent, and you multiply that by your backlink profile. So it's like, what are you missing? If you have amazing links already, but your alt page is garbage, okay, fix that. If it's, yeah, so every, every case is different. That's why Google said, you know, links are not a top three ranking factor because for each site, the number one missing thing is yeah. different. If your site takes 20 seconds to load, that's the number one ranking factor for you. That, okay. That's going to help you the most. Yeah, so uh, maybe the last question I have for you. Uh, how do you see the future of link building in, in, in an SEO in the uh, next few years? I think link building in-house is going to get way more difficult. Like just doing it on your own is, is going to be tough. The reason we're able to build extremely high quality links is because we have so many clients. So it's like, if we, we can invest a lot of money into doing a 4,000 word guide with custom images and do it for HubSpot uh, and then negotiate with them and give them favors and like really build that relationship because we can put four client links in there. Mm -hmm. And we can give links from that post to three other partners okay. that now count as favors. So we have economies of scale to actually, you know, make make the most out of it. Otherwise, it would be too expensive if, if we just did it for for one site. So I think agencies, good agencies, are going to become uh, more important. Okay. So the last question: If SEO turns out to, to be dead, what will you do? What will be your plan for for Eleven? People are always going to be searching for things and then like search engine, it's search engine optimization. Okay. It's, it's not Google optimization. It is for now. It has been for the next 16 years. I think it will be for the next 10. But if one day, I don't know, everyone was just on TikTok, we'll adapt and we'll optimize for TikTok or Google, you know, Google home devices or AI glasses or yeah. whatever. We'll, we'll just figure out and uh, find a way how to how to feed the next algorithm okay okay so that that's it thank you so much thank you it was a pleasure and see you on the after party and guys don't forget to subscribe our channel and uh, we're seeing each other on the coest on next year i hope